I'm with Peter Maines, the CEO and President of Census. Peter, thanks for joining us. So Peter, if 2010 was a year of the smart meter, what's the theme for 2011? Well, we see uh, two themes. One, it certainly will be around uh, distribution automation. Mm -hmm. We see the mass adoption of uh, distribution automation. Yeah. Over the past years, it has been talked a lot with uh, some of the deployment reaching a scale that the utilities will look for additional values that they can add into their communications umbrella. Distribution automation will take off this year. And uh, also the extension of the smart grid uh, to water. Uh, uh, certainly here uh -huh. in the U.S., uh, there is a very narrow focus when when uh, we talk about the smart grid on electric, right. the smart grid for electric, and uh, we have certainly seen the smart grid for water take off as well, and I think that will manifest itself this year. Interesting. So I, I guess the obvious follow-up question there is, uh, quickly, what's Census doing in both of those two new areas of growth, distribution automation and, and water metering? Uh, uh, distribution automation, we have uh, we had acquired a company in the distribution automation space about 18 months ago mm -hmm. and uh, that acquisition paired with the communications technology we already had in-house, teaming up with companies like ABB that are sizable companies in the space that really helped us uh, to provide value propositions to the customers. And uh, we have seen uh, throughout uh, the end of last year new customer awards where utilities were awarding business to us. Uh, that, uh, that already had a, uh, I would say, a sophisticated metering system in place, or meter reading system in place, so uh, the, the business case was built around distribution automation benefit and not so much moving metering to the next level of automation. Uh, right. And we see a, a lot of utilities right now that are out uh, looking for, for smart grid activities in 2011, that uh, smart metering benefits will not be the driver of the business case. So we certainly saw that. And on the water side, uh, if you go back, the roots of census were clearly in metering for an extended period of time. So we have a strong leading position uh, in the water space. And uh, the, the uniform technology that we use across electric and water, which for us is a differentiator because water is a battery powered device right. that uniquely positions us to bring the smart grid for water to life as well. Terrific. So uh, what issues and challenges are top of mind with customers today? What points of pain are they complaining about when you talk with them? Well, I think the one the one point of pain that we've certainly surpassed is that in a very short period of time, we deployed technology at, at mass, and that's sense in the industry overall. And any time you adopt a technology, uh, a new technology, a technology revolution takes place, there is a bit of a there's a bit of a pain involved. I think we, we as an industry are absolutely beyond that point today. So if I, if I would think about the one main theme that stands in the way of mass adoption, I think it would be to me the, the regulatory environment yes. that exists. Uh, uh, really the, the benefit that we provide to, to the utility and society's efficiency and today the way uh, the regulatory environment doesn't really facilitate the mass adoption of efficiencies in, in the way I think it it should. Right? So in some jurisdictions, uh, utilities are actually disincentivized from, from providing efficiency. Uh, and if I'm understanding you right, you're saying we need to change it so we have incentives for efficiency? Or? Absolutely. Yeah. I think that the, the investment cycles are uh, that are prescribed by some of the regulatory environments are too long to adopt technology on a scale. Uh, and uh, too often also utilities use <clears throat> This, the, the, the system that existed as a very simple financing method. Uh, and I think we need to break out of that and, and really value the efficiency that is provided to the utility and to society in a different way. And then I think they will accelerate the adoption. Are you seeing signs of that around the world? Uh, certainly we see, yes, I would say we see signs around the world. I would, I would certainly put the, the UK there. They're trying to build a centralized communications infrastructure to really to facilitate that approach at a scale that has never existed before. It hasn't been decided yet which approach to go forward, but I see I see the right signs. Five years from now, what region or country will have the best smart grid, and why? Uh, well, five years is uh, is far away. I can certainly rule out everyone who who acts as a bystander and. Uh, doesn't have a plan to move into smart grid will certainly be left behind. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think there's an interesting approach again uh, uh, back to the UK that take a bit the different approach that they want to have a, a nationwide communications infrastructure backbone to facilitate uh, competition within the industry. So that will, will be one that uh, five years down the road we might see is that a solid approach or is the approach uh, 
utility by utility mm -hmm. is at a more solid one. So time will tell, but if you're not acting today, you'll certainly be left behind. Uh, describe some of your distribution automation applications today and some of your aspirations for tomorrow. So today, what we are offering today is uh, uh, simple ones would be uh, uh, capacitor bank automation, bolt bar automation, uh, fault circuit indicators, uh, monitoring and sensing that exists today. Uh, the beauty of, uh, of the acquisition that we made two years ago is that company already had an integration into the SCADA system that exists in utilities today. Uh, so if, uh, if a utility decides to go with our approach, they add a capacitor bank, it immediately shows up in their SCADA system and they can use their existing SCADA system to, to exert control commands. So, so that is a, a very, very sleek integration into a technology that's already widely adapted across utilities. Uh, and, and as I said, uh, we see uh, utilities uh, crossing the critical point in their deployments or reaching the, uh, the end of their deployments and they're looking at, uh, at additional value proposition that they can use for their communications umbrella and distribution automation always ends up being at the top of their list. There's a bit of a geographical preference which, which distribution automation is the number one of their list, uh -huh. but any time that they're beyond deploying the meters at scale, and those are, I would say, fairly massive undertakings, like uh, uh, those meters were deployed over 100 years and suddenly uh -huh. they decide over three years we want to deploy, That's right. uh, replace every meter, so that, uh, that consumes a utility to some extent, but uh, once, they are, once they see the finish line, or like in the case of Portland, they have finished, they immediately look what else, because uh, they, they see the benefits, and then it's distribution automation, distribution automation, distribution sure. automation. Peter, thanks for spending time with us. Thank you.